Hey there, Game Master again, aka a true old GM. Today we're going to talk about the character creation and customization process. This is my starting screen. Pay no attention to this guy right here. He is my default character that I made. Basically, I just made him hairless as much as I could and the eyebrows and his skin and everything black and gave him no clothes. All he is is a default starting character that is used that the, the player never sees. The event starts off where he's transparent. They get to choose between um, a plethora of characters and then transparency is off and they only see the character they chose. So this is just sort of a placeholder. Um, so I want to show you first how this works so you'll understand what we're talking about when we get into the thick of things. So if we play test. Game. So I have a choice between choosing between a man or a woman. And then I have a choice between these different ethnicities. African American, Asian, Caucasian, Hispanic, and Native American. Now, keep in mind that the resources on the character creation are kind of limited. So I kind of had to, for example, let me choose Native American. And then you have the option of renaming. We'll call him Joe. And I'm going to go ahead and accept. And so he looks very like a stereotypical Old West Native American. Um, just because I was kind of limited and wanted to make sure that the player you know, knew that this was obviously supposed to be a Native American. So some of them ended up looking kind of like your stereotypical cartoon things. Um, but like I said, like I wanted to make sure, for example, that the skin tones between maybe Native Americans and Hispanics can be very similar because they have, you know, they come essentially from the, the same lineage. So I wanted to, you know, be able to make sure that the player could tell the difference so the native american yes is red and i understand they're not red and that's you know not totally politically correct but for the purposes of the game i think that it's okay so then you see your character and then you start out and you have seven points to allocate amongst seven abilities the dungeons and dragons oops sorry dropped that the dungeons and dragons game has six um fallout has seven and don't know how many Mass Effect has because I haven't played that. But you can sort of, if you look here, you know, some of these are maybe obvious as to what they translate over to the D&D &D system. Um, some of them are a little bit different and some of them I made up on my own. So you can choose your own, your own abilities, your own stats that you want to have. And, you, don't, you know, you don't have to use what's there. But the idea is, is these are all variables and there's another variable that is the points that you have and so the default is the one just under normal and i'll show you when we get into it but these are each assigned a score this is assigned a score of five this is this kind of assigned a score of four three two and one and that's going to come into play when we generate skills as well as when we do opposing skill rolls so I have seven abilities and seven points. So that should be enough. And I actually think that I may have uh, one extra left over, but I should have enough to raise everything up to normal level. So that one, one, two, three, four, five, six, and somehow I have two points left over. So now let me show you this. I have two points left over, but if I go over, it says you have used up too many points. You have seven points to allocate amongst seven abilities. So I'm not sure why I have one left over, honestly. I'm going to have to go back and look at that. But then if I were to use up two little points, and so if I were to decrease this stat one, then it would add points so that I, you can do some min maxing um 
but if you don't use up enough, you know, it's basically the points have to end up at zero, otherwise it'll make you start all over again. And it shows you the points as you go along. So you can redo it if you're like, ah, no. So make him regular healthy, make him a little bit fast because that's what my gun skill's gonna end up being. And as a result, let's keep him weak to make up for that. We'll make him normal awareness. We'll make him normal wit, which is intelligence. And we'll give him normal personality. And we'll give him normal determination. And then I can accept or redo it. And I'm going to go ahead and accept. And then I have skill points to allocate. And these are all choice events. And so if you use up more than five, five, because the show event only has six spots, you're going to want to make a more and in that more make another show event. And I have 12 skills. So I have three different show events or show choices. And then finally I have back and that loops all the way back to the start. So if I'm like, okay, I'm going to dump them into like, you know, I can go to artillery. I can go to perception and then go to like unarmed. And then I'm like, okay, explosive, lockpick, stab, gun, perception. And I'm like, well, you know, I did make my guy have really high speed. So I probably want to put some more in like speed skills. So I'm going to give him a lot of guns. One, two, three, four, five in guns. And let's say two in perception. Uh, and then one more in one more in guns. And then I accept. And then it transfers me to this tutorial stage, which we'll get in later on. This is basically a stage that I'm going to have where the player can test out some skills. You know, walk down, and this is going to be a potential battle. Anyways, we'll get into that like in a later video. So the way I script this out is you have an event here, and keep in mind this, this character starts off transparent. To do that, you go into settings, system, start transparent. And on this event, it starts off with a loop, show choice between man and woman. Now let's take a brief aside. So you can essentially have as many characters to choose from as you want. Uh, you could, if you really like wanted to do this, you could give them the choice of every combination that they have in here. You would just have to sort of so say, let's say you make this character and then you make him with this face, then you make him with this face. So that's a potential of 12 different characters just using this one build, but maybe that's not a big deal. But, or you can go through and, you know, make the hair all different colors. And But keep in mind that each one of these is a character. So what I did is I just kept it down to a man or a woman, and then between five different races. Um, a real quick aside, like I said, the resources are kind of odd. And what is up with these front hairs? Like, I don't know what's going on with some of these, like, Eastern style RPGs and everything coming out like what who why like maybe this one I'll, I'll accept that but like dude like what I don't think so so usually I just keep that one blank and go with these which are not bad but I don't know I feel uh, what the uh, yeah it's whatever so that was a real quick aside and like I said you can make as many characters as you want it's just going to be a little bit more complicated in programming how you get the player to choose between them but so what I did like I said man and woman starts off with just a simple show choices and um, man and woman and when it's a man I make the variable of a character equal one and if it's a woman I make it equal two and then show another choice list of all the different races african-american asian caucasian hispanic and native american these are all you know races that showed up in the wild west and you know you don't see for example a lot of black people in western movies but that's because hollywood has not always been known for its you know racial sensitivity especially back in the 70s it, actually in real life one out of every three cowboys was black so anyways that's that's kind of a, a side note 
But so, for example, <clears throat> when you choose African American, and then and then takes this number and multiplies it by one. If you choose Asian, it takes this mul number, multiplies it by three. Now, the reason I have it one, three, five, seven, and nine is I tried to do it one, two, three, four, five at first, but came to realize that that a couple times when you know there's multipliers that are set. I think, for example, you get the number four twice. So you want to make sure that each one of the totals is totally separate and different than all the others. And then you do, you know, an if, a bunch of if um, conditional branches. And I always put an else statement in each of my conditional branches. I don't you know, see that there's a problem if I don't do that, but I've noticed that sometimes it gets buggy if I leave it out. Um, so if character equals one, and the only way you get that is if you choose a man and make him African American, then it will add, and you know, the character's name in here, in the actors is man one. Here's my black guy. And he's got a little white hat. All the they all have like white hats, so to speak, because that it helps you tell that they're the good guy, because they're the white hats versus the black hats. It's an old western thing. Uh, so oh, that's the wrong screen. So oh, wrong screen again. Back here. So yeah, you it adds man one, which is the black guy, and then remo removes my little creepy default character, and then it gets you the name input screen where you can change his name. And once again, if character is character two, the only way you can get that is if you choose a woman and African American. So essentially you have a choice between 10 different people and they already have, you know, you can't really, I didn't make them so you can customize the look because it's, like I said, that would be a lot and it's just sprites. It's not like it's, you know, 3D awesomeness like say Fallout is, so it doesn't really matter. So then once you get all that done, and you go down here and finally there's a show choices between accept and redo. When you accept, it breaks the loop, turns the transparency off and goes to the next event page. And this is where you have starting points equal to seven. Uh, this is your starting ability points. Start that variable equal to whatever you want it to be. And I had little text describing stuff. And every time that it chooses a new ability, it says the ability and something that shows if you do, you know, this little script forward slash V and then in between brackets, the variable number, it'll show you this, this particular um, set of characters shows you what the variable is. So if you use nothing, it'll show seven. Then each one of the the stats is a show choice event and you can do this however you want however you decide to allocate the point systems but for example so this is how i did it and i defaulted it on the the one that it essentially defaults and it shows how the points are affected based on what your choice is and so for example if you choose to go to very healthy it subtracts three from your starting points and sets that to five if you choose healthy, it subtracts two and sets it to four. Skipping down here, if you choose very unhealthy, it adds one to your starting point and makes health one. So go through all that for all of your stats. And then once again, it, and then there's a little script that says, if points equal zero, then you have the choice to accept or redo. But if you get to the end and you either don't use up enough or you use up too many, it tells you either you've used not used up enough or you used up too many. Set the starting points back to seven again and start all over. So once you finally get it all right, um, like I said, all this stuff, the level, the experience points, they're all variables. So I set level to one. I set experience to zero. I And this is how I did it is my uh, HP equals health, then multiplied that five, and then added 20. And then my hp that's you know goes up and down in battle is another variable but you want to make sure that when you're healing stuff it can't ever go above this variable right here then i did defense equal to speed multiply five and the way i make it go up every level is i gave it a modifier of two and so every level essentially goes up by two that two comes from an average of essentially if you take the highest um in speed five in speed and added like had you know a hundred 
um, in skills versus if you had like a one in speed. It kind of averages about to about two points per level. So that's why I did that. So you gain an average of two defense every level. So that sets the basic parameters and then it switches to the next event page. And this is where you do your skills. So this uh, new variable is skills starts at a base of five and then adds whatever my wit parameter, which is intelligence. And that's pretty standard as in any Western RPG game is the more intelligent you are, the more skill points you gain a level. So if you have a wit of one, you get six skill points. If you have a wit of 10, you get 10 skill points. Uh, once again, showing the loop and showing the skill points anytime you have a chance to make another it shows uh, another show event shows all your skills so if you click on artillery it adds one to artillery and subtracts from your skill points it gives you five choices on the sixth one you make a sub show choices same thing all your skills oh and i also added in parentheses like what um ability they use it's based on and then once again finally another final uh sub show choices and then at the end of that there's a back and if it clicks back then it loops all the way back up and starts all over again not all over because it keeps the points the way you've allocated it but it just you know it allows you to loop through then finally once the skills uh the variable here gets to zero then you have the chance to accept or redo. If you accept, it breaks the loop. If you choose redo, it resets that skill um, number back to what it was, and it resets all the skills back to zero. You didn't have to reset these parameters back to zero because anytime you click on it, it changes it to that number. You just have to make sure you reset the skill number back to zero. Here, it doesn't, you know, it, it adds one to every time you click it. So you want to make sure that you're setting all these back to zero. Otherwise, somebody might figure out, oh, I can just click, click and redo and get 100 before I even start on my skills. And then after I've done that, if you accept, then it transfers the player to that little tutorial screen that we had where it'll teach them how to use some skills. So anyways, that is how I did it. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if you would do it differently in the comments and let's get a, maybe a dialogue going and we could improve the process and see what we can come up with. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, and next time I think we will talk about skills like random di random die rolls so to speak and how to do opposed skill checks. So thank you very much. I hope you have a great day and see you next time. Thank you very much.